hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. If you're wondering why my, I'm chuckling, my husband and I just caught each other's gaze from across the room, and he likes to just give you that, like, creepy stare until one of you breaks. Clearly, I broke. Um, so, with that... What? Are you doing a webhead chat? Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were live. That's all I was asking. Guys, not live. I am recording this. <laughs> Uh, it wouldn't be real life if weird things didn't happen. Um, I also have a fan. It's kind of like direct. Well, you can see it right here if you're looking. This is part of my sweet neck fan in case anyone's curious. Um, this thing's amazing. I, I don't know why it has like color options. I guess if you're like raving and it's summertime, I don't know. But it works really well as a desk fan as well as a neck fan. Um, and it is super, super hot up here. I'm also recording this while my tiny human is very much awake and you will definitely hear her singing the song of her people in the background. Um, oddly enough, she went on like a 10 minute rant about how she was going to take a good nap today and that did not happen. Well, it's not currently happening. I guess there's still time. <sighs> anyway, if you guys are wondering why you're seeing this canvas in a whip and chat, this is the I'll get it right one day. Pirate Princess from uh, Dreamer Designs, Julie Filipenko. I put this on hold so that I could work on my Alice in the Sea of Tears from Diamond Art Club for Knox's Punked Out Diamonds event. And I have completed that. So I turn... I'm going to turn her down just a little bit. I did it! I did it! Thanks, Bean. Um... It's so loud. I don't know why it feels so loud. Which means I'm going to forget to turn it back up later. And tonight I'm going to be like, why is it so quiet? So, anyway. Um, where was I? So, I put this aside so that I could finish work. I could work on the other canvas for the event. Because starting in July, I will be working on a canvas for Rox's Travel with Diamonds event. And I didn't have that much left to go on this, but I was just like, let me just put this aside and I'll come back and I'll finish it. And so here I am. I don't know why I left myself such awkward spaces here to fill in. So I may or may not be in frame. I may or may not like pop in and out uh, without making the camera like super, super, super wide angle. This is about as good as it's going to get. So... With that being said, hi, hello, we are into the whip and chat now, a good, uh, almost three minutes. So, if you do not know what a whip and chat is, a whip and chat is where I work on my current whip, or work in progress, and you can either pull out whatever it is you are working on and work alongside, um, crafting project, whatever it may be, house project, cleaning, cooking, the boring stuff. I've had people tell me they listen while they drive, on their way to work, at work. Um, shout out to all the people who have the ability to work and craft. Um, I've actually been seeing a lot of people making comments recently about... Oh my gosh, I can't believe how quickly you finished this. So-and-so finished it. Blah, 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 blah. And I just want to put this out there as like a gentle reminder... That while you guys may, a, a big one I see are when people say, oh, I, I was able to get it done because I'm a stay-at-home parent. And then you look at yourself and you go, well, I'm a stay-at-home parent and I barely get anything done. Everybody who is a parent, and this is just an example, I'll, I'll cover more in a second here, but I'm a stay-at-home parent but I don't have the ability, for example, to work on my kit or even have my kit anywhere near my child. So I only work during her, I say this with major air quotes, sleeping hours. Because I can't put this on my dining room table and then just put it aside when she comes over because she is a human cat. She will, like intentionally knock it over um, and think it's funny and things like that. And yet there are other people who their dining room table is the house to their diamond painting all the time. And that's great. I, you know, there's times that I wish I had that ability to just like work on mine whenever. 
But the fact that I have a dedicated space to work on mine, which not everybody does, and I'm aware of that, um, actually has done a lot of really good for my husband's and my relationship because we share this craft space, which is why you heard my husband over there chit-chatting, asking me if we were live and giving me uh, creepy eyeballs, which you guys couldn't hear the creepy eyeballs, but you could hear my response to it, so... Um, I've also seen a lot of people say like, oh my God, I can't believe you're so fast. And somebody will say, oh, well, I work from home and they have the ability to diamond paint while they're in between Zoom calls or whatever it may be. Don't ever look at somebody else's time frame and say, wow, I don't know how they did it. I wish I could do it, blah, 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 because everybody has different circumstances. And it's always one of those like weird compliments when someone says... Oh, you did it so fast. And I, I don't think that I work particularly fast, but I think I move a little bit faster than some people do. But it's definitely not a competition. It's not like who can do it the fastest. I know people who stay home and diamond paint for, you know, eight hours a day. And somebody will be like, oh my god, that's amazing. I wish I could do that. And their response is, well, I have, you know, chronic illnesses and that's why I am home. Or I'm disabled and that's why I'm working for so many hours. And then that leaves you in an awkward position of going like, oh, well, I, I don't envy that. So just remember when you <laughs> get an awkward response to somebody telling you that you diamond paint quickly or whatever adjective they want to use everybody has their own reasons and it's it's not one better than the other but I just wanted to touch base on that because I've gotten that a lot recently and it's one of those things that I, I never know how to respond to it but then I also like I don't think I work super super fast but you know I do use a multi-placer and I do get to work you know about three I would say about three and a half hours a day I get to work on diamond painting. So, you know, I'm always very honest about how long it takes me to work on something. I am not one of those people, by the way, that will go start date, end date. Because my time that I work, personally, this is just me, is never... I start on this date, I end on this date, whoa, and work every day in between. I'm pretty sure a bird just flew into our window. If you guys are wondering, it's that kind of whipping chat today. Quick water break. So, um, I can't remember where I left off with my last whipping chat. Um, I will go ahead and make sure to link that up in the eye. But, my daughter's endoscopy was scheduled for uh, a week ago. Um, I am recording this on Monday. I wanted to record it yesterday, but it was like 100 degrees up here. And when I tell you guys, like, it is hot on our third floor, it is hot on our third floor. I got not even halfway up the stairs and I could just feel, like, the veil of heat. And I, well, I'm, when I say this, like, I, I hope you guys understand, like, I'm not exaggerating. There is a good 10 degree difference between this floor and the floor below us. And you can feel it once you get a couple stairs down. It just hits you and all of a sudden either the heat lifts or you walk into the heat depending on if you're going up or downstairs. So, um, it's hot. It's super hot. Uh, so I opted to not film this yesterday. So the plan is to get this up as quickly as possible. So you guys may see this tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, my daughter was scheduled for her endoscopy last week on Tuesday and we did end up having to reschedule it, which is such a bummer because while it didn't take us very long to get the appointment, um, how do I explain this in the easiest way possible? We've been waiting for this procedure for about a year now. And I know what you're thinking. You just told us it didn't take you that long to get on the schedule. So last year when we began having the conversations about her having the endoscopy done they opted to push it aside until the following summer which would be this summer due to covid and they didn't want to do it over cold and flu season and rsv because they didn't want to possibly 
bring her into the hospital when, you know, a lot of other illnesses were happening, if that makes sense. I need some more water real quick. It's funny, I got a couple new tumblers in the mail, but somehow I just keep ending up with the same one. And I used to think, like, I used to scoff, and I was like, I can't believe people would spend that much money on a, a cup. And I'm like, now I get it. But anyway, so they rescheduled her endoscopy. And, of course, my kiddo got sick on a Saturday. And there is nothing worse than when your kid gets sick, surgery or not, after hours. Because there's very little that can be done. Now, her pediatrician does have an after-hours nurse's line. We did talk to them. Great. Um, and obviously there was not much they could do. They're also not affiliated with the same hospital that her gastroenterologist is. So I finally get a hold of someone at the GI's office and I had asked them, I said, do you guys not have any sort of after hours line? Like I didn't know what else to do at that point. It wasn't necessarily that I had to talk to somebody, but I was trying to figure out what our options were and what the next step was. And things like that. And they explained to me. So she goes to a pediatric subspecialties office. Which means that they have, you know, uh, it, I think that her office has, like, cardiology, gastroenterology, uh, dermatology, nutrition, a couple things. So you can't just have one person answering the phone because what if they're a cardiac specialist and they're being asked questions about ear, nose, and throat? They, they don't, just because they're a doctor or a nurse doesn't mean that that's their specialty. Now, that being said, her previous GI's office, which oddly enough, it's the same GI doctor, just based out of a different hospital. He, when you would call his office after hours, they would actually patch you through to whoever the doctor on call at the hospital was. So you could still talk to somebody if you had... A question. So for us, we just kind of sat waiting in limbo. And our GI, the nurse that we dealt with, she was absolutely wonderful. She called us back um, and said that her GI doctor wanted to put her on on a day that didn't have any time slots available. And she said, Doc, there's, there's no spots available. He's like, don't worry about it. Just put her on the schedule. We'll make it work. Well... She called me back later, was able to confirm they did indeed make it work. So, our daughter's endoscopy is scheduled for July. So, I don't have to wait that long, which is fantastic. But on the flip side of that coin, I'm also incredibly nervous to just do anything and everything with her. Because we took her to the playground and literally within 48 hours, she was sick. And today is the first day since last Saturday, so that's <laughs> nine days, that she doesn't have, like, that faucet runny nose. Um, you know, I don't want to keep her at home in a bubble because, you know, her immune system has to get used to, just like all of ours, have to get used to being around things again. But I can't risk having us having to reschedule her procedure again. So we're just kind of living cautiously right now. It's not that far away. It's about two weeks away. So, you know, fingers crossed. Damn it. I put this color away like three times. Um, there it is again. So I'm hoping that we can keep her nice and safe and protected and all that fun stuff until she has her procedure. I mean, I'm obviously, my job as a parent is to keep my child safe and protected all the time. Which, let me tell you, that's like one of the least favorite things of being a parent. Because they don't want it. They're like, yeah. You know, <laughs> like, I tried explaining that to her the other day. It's my job as your mom to make sure that you are happy and healthy. And she's just looking at me like, no. I'm like, alright, kid. One day you'll understand. Whether she decides to have children of her own or not, one day she will understand mom and dad did have her best intentions at heart. Or we try to, you know. I, so this is my first Dreamer Designs kit, you guys, that I've worked on. I own another one. I haven't worked on it yet. But I 
am one of those people, my husband can attest to this, that almost every single kit that I work on, when I get to the end of like a color that's not a huge color, every time I freak out and go, I'm not going to have enough. Every single time. I'm telling you, this does not look like enough for what I see right here. So hopefully there's not any more in the section over here. But uh, we shall see. So, yesterday was the first time that she seemed much better. Her voice was back to normal. Um, she wasn't... Her nose wasn't running like it had been. Um, so, we... My husband had to run an errand. And then we opted to pick up dinner. And we've eaten quite a few times now. We've eaten at uh, Mission Barbecue. Which, look, listen, it's not great, but it, it gets the job done. And it has picnic benches and outdoor stuff. And, um, I don't remember if I said this in my one whip and chat, but the one time we were there, full disclosure, I don't like country music. I, at all. Um, like, some of, like, the real poppy stuff I don't have a problem with, but, like, country music is just not my jam. And I, I don't. If that's your thing, great for you. I just, it's not my thing. So, every time we're there, they always have country music playing. And the last time we were there, Briar's like, this music is dancing music, which made us laugh. So, if I can, I will insert the clip of her dancing on the patio here. Silly little bean. But we did that. And that was the extent of what we've done for the past over a week. So, um, a few things I've noticed from my, my week. Um, yesterday when we were at Mission, listen... I'm not going to tell you that you need to be more mindful of certain types of people. But if you're that person that sees somebody directly behind you and you're holding open the door and you don't just wait the few extra seconds to hold it for the person coming behind you, we can all attest that's something rude. If you see somebody carrying a child, a baby, an infant, a toddler, whatever it is, if the kid is seven years old and they're carrying them, do not bolt right in front of them as they're walking because it doesn't matter if that kid weighs 7 pounds, 17 pounds, 70 pounds. A person carrying a child can't just quick pivot the way you can when you're not carrying it. And this woman, like, totally ran right in front of me while I was carrying Briar because I was trying to hold her um, so that she's not touching everything, you know? I was getting her drink because they have the self-serve... Uh, soda and juice and whatever. And I didn't want her trying to <laughs> serve herself or anyone else for that matter. Um, and I was so annoyed. And this woman had all teenage or grown-up children with her. And then she was like, I need you guys to help me. And they all tried to cut in front. And I was like, listen, lady. Like, you see I'm carrying a child. Listen, Linda. Um, if you guys don't know what that's from, it's like a viral, a little kid, he's like yelling at his mom because he wants cupcakes. If you Google, listen, Linda, you'll see, it's funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's like all I have left. So hopefully there's not another section. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, and if you're curious, I actually have my drills upside down right now. Because my canvas is upside down and I find, especially with like this one has sixes and nines and they're the same color, uh, which really drives me crazy, but it makes it a lot easier for me to make sure I'm grabbing the right drill if I'm looking at them the way they appear on the canvas. I also do the same thing when I leave them on my, um, con the container on my uh, canvas so that I can see it in the same way. So I'll empty this. And then I will leave this upside down on my canvas right here so I know what symbol I'm working on. Anyway, so I've just noticed I'm going to, this video, per usual, choo-choo, I'm going to go off on a bit of a couple tangents and then I'm going to come back around. 
Um, hopefully I remember to come back around. But one thing I'm noticing, um, which let me first start off by saying that I'm not speaking for you and your state and your country, whatever the rules are there. Damn it, I put that color away again. But what I will say is the state that I live in currently has lifted their mask mandate. I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to stand here and say I'm positive this is how it works. What I believe that that is saying is that now all people can remove their mask, whether they are vaccinated or not, children and adults, unless otherwise stated by a business. If you're one of those people that goes into a business and goes, well, the state says I don't have to wear a mask anymore. Just remember, businesses, hospitals, things like that, they're privately owned. If a hospital says you have to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. If a business states you have to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. That's just the way... Private ownership works. If a store tells you you can't come in unless you're wearing a neon shirt, you can't come in unless you're wearing a neon shirt. So if you see me wandering around with my mask on, please mind your business because I'm going to continue to wear my mask because I don't trust the people around me. That being said, my child will continue to wear a mask because she cannot be vaccinated and I don't trust the people around. All of a sudden... All these parents who are like, well, I don't have to wear a mask now, are, we're making their kids go, well, you don't have to wear a mask if I don't have to wear a mask. And those kids are still potential carriers and less susceptible. And for me and my family, and this is not an up for discussion thing, I feel like I say that every single time I have this conversation. And I feel like most people are very respectable about it, uh, respectful about it. Um, this is what we will continue to do. Um, my husband and I have both been fully vaccinated for quite some time now. Shout out to us for being fat. We qualified in that first round or second round or whatever round. Um, but our daughter has a compromised airway and we will do anything we can to protect that. Is this a different color than, yes, it is. <sighs> Listen, Dreamer Designs, if you're watching, you need to rechart some of these symbols because I'm telling you. These are confusing. They're confusing. It's not the only one that's confusing. There's a six and a nine that are the same color. There's arrows that are the same color. I'm not going to give away all my secrets of my uh, post review. That will happen. I will film a post review for this one and for the Alice one um, as soon as this one is done. I didn't want to film the post review for Alice today because I wanted to get this worked on anyway so like i said choo choo back and forth if you guys have no idea what i'm talking about i am the conductor of the hot mess express i've never tried to hide that my life is a mess i'm a mess and uh there's room for people on the hot mess express if you'd like to come all aboard and um i often get people that will just respond to things that i post or state and they will just respond with choo choo so, um, that's how we're going to be doing things here. I know that is not the case for everyone, but I do want to make sure that I protect her. And I believe that our local schools are lifting masks for students in the fall, which... I'm not sure how I feel about that when it comes to small children because that's great that the parents, not the parents, that the teachers are protected. Um, that's doing a huge service to obviously our community, having the people in charge vaccinated, the ones who are dealing with our kids on the day to day. But at the same token, that doesn't mean that every one of these kids who goes to school is coming from a fully vaccinated house. And even if you are fully vaccinated, nothing's a guarantee that you won't get it. It just lessens the likelihood and the severity. Um, she is, I don't know what she's doing, but she's having a good time. 
So, I don't know. I'm not ready to think about that. But it's super frustrating that my kid happens to get sick for the first time over her school break. Because, you know, we wanted to obviously have her endoscopy. And then we wanted to take her to the aquarium. She has to go to the zoo the other day. Our zoo is primarily outdoors. So, like, that's something I... I feel comfortable taking her to do. It's just a super shitty zoo. So, like, I don't want to spend money on it. But, um, that's a story for another day. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. And, um, you know, I know there are a lot of parents that think, you know, well, it's about time that the kids don't have to wear them. And I... I know this is where, uh, if my video hasn't been controversial for you enough, this is where my video is going to get more controversial. Um, if I can find, here we go. So this is a PSA to all people everywhere. Well, I guess I shouldn't say everywhere. For all people who are in the Northern Hemisphere that have summer temperatures at the moment. We are aware, everybody is aware, that society wants to get back to normal. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt that people want to get back to just resuming lives the way they were. Here is my PSA to you. Life cannot resume back to normal the way it was. And I don't mean ever, I just mean in the manner that people want it to. And what do I mean by that? So, when we went into lockdown, and when we started quarantining, when we started being more conscious of how we shared ourselves and expressed ourselves out in public and things like that, we did it by staggering. Not everyone in the U.S. all went into quarantine at the exact same time for the exact same length. It didn't work like that. It can't work like that to resume as well. And the reason I'm saying this, and I'm saying it in, a, in an aggressive tone, is that people want to get back to their lives. They want to go to their amusement parks, to their county fairs. They want to have their summer barbecues. They want to go out to eat. They want to sit on the deck. They want to have a good time. The problem is... Industries like hospitality have not had a chance to recover. And I'm not going to get into the debate of people being underpaid and unemployment and all that stuff because that's a whole conversation for another day. But what I am saying is that restaurants who used to be fully staffed are no longer. So just because you're ready to eat at a restaurant does not mean that the restaurant is ready for you to eat at it. And what I mean by that is if you have a large party... Call ahead. Make sure they can accommodate it. If the wait for a restaurant you went to a year and a half ago or last year is twice as long, that's what it is because every single restaurant is understaffed. Every single restaurant is understaffed. Every single restaurant. So, for example, I live near an amusement park. Families are coming into town. Locals are going to the rest the, the park. And now, all of a sudden, everybody wants to go out to eat, and they're complaining, like, I don't want to go somewhere that's going to have an hour-long wait. Listen, guys, <laughs> there are not enough people working in, in restaurants to make it so that there's not going to be an hour-long wait anymore. And I know some people are going to say, well, people should go back to work, and that's not even part of the conversation. Some of these restaurants have not financially recovered enough to have a full staff going on. Some of these restaurants are just not prepared to go from 25 to 50% capacity to full capacity with people coming in with large parties. So at the end of the day, if you are going to go to a restaurant situation, you need to give yourself much more time than you did before and realize this is what our new norm is. We can't just go back to the way it was, even though people want it to be that way. That's not how life works. And it's unfortunate because I see so many people in the hospitality industry being treated like complete trash. Like, we have an Arby's near us locally. And we have a local group on Facebook for our town. And people were in there ranting and raving that how dare they close their doors at 6 p.m. 
they're closing their doors at 6 p.m. because they don't have enough staff members to have a full staff. They've been open through the entire pandemic, and they've had all of the Karens and the Chads and the Tom Dicks and Harrys coming through that drive through yelling at them that they're not fast enough, their food isn't good enough, it's too expensive, why don't you have more people working? If you have such a problem with it, then you go work in the hospitality industry. We cannot recover as a society when you have people working against each other. And I, like, we went to Taco Bell the other day. Um, we did it as a drive through and we placed a pickup order and I don't know if they're open for in-house dining or just in-house pickup. Either way, with a toddler in tow, it's so much easier to just go through the drive through So we placed the order and this was like 1145 and it kicked back and told us that our order couldn't be placed at this time because there are no time slots available. And I thought maybe there was a glitch in the app. You know, let me check. I come to find out that the restaurant, because they're understaffed, doesn't open until noon. That's fine. That's totally fine. So we set our time up for noon. Um, but my husband got an email that the order was canceled. So we just wanted to make sure. And they have a post-it note up on their drive through saying, um, due to staffing issues, these are our new hours. And people are complaining. And it's like, you can't get mad at a restaurant for not having a full staff when they're trying to have a full staff. I understand it's an inconvenience to you, but I just want to put this out there as a friendly-ish reminder. It's going to get worse over the summer. Because more and more people are going to want to meet their friends and families out for drinks, for cocktails, for food, for snacks, whatever it may be. If you are one of those people who was impatient with wait staffs and, and wait times and, and restaurants and stuff before the pandemic, I'm going to tell you now, you're going to have no patience now. But this is when they need our patience the most. This is when, you know... You've got to remember that most of these people work for, it's like $2 and whatever cents an hour, and they make their money on tips. And a lot of wait staff did not qualify for unemployment because of the way that they get paid. If you have what you deem shitty service, still tip your waiter or waitress. This is how they are making their living. And they've been doing it throughout the entire pandemic putting their health and safety at risk to make you and your family happy, to feed you. Cut them some slack. And I am saying this as somebody who has never worked in the hospitality industry, but I've had plenty of people close to me work in the hospitality industry. And I'm already seeing it, the people are being rude and antsy and they don't understand that just because you want to go to a restaurant and you want things to be the way they were, they're not going to be. It takes time for things to recover. So this is my reminder to you that while you are out and about this summer, utilize things like making reservations, call ahead seating, things like that. Remember, if your favorite restaurant now has an hour and a half wait, that's just how it is. And it doesn't do anybody any good for you to bitch and complain about it, especially online. There's nothing I hate more than when I see people just go to, like, Facebook groups and be like, I can't believe it took me 17 minutes to get my sandwich at the drive-thru. Guys, they have, like, three people working. They're working as fast and as hard as they possibly can. Like, we have a pizza hut near us. And people were complaining about, um, it took them two hours to get through to the pizza hut for them to take their order. First of all, if it's taking two hours to get through to a restaurant, why would you keep going? Why would you keep trying? Um, but let me tell you, the tips and tricks and secrets here is, that pizza hut sucked with their time before the pandemic. Why would anybody expect it to be any different? I can't tell you the amount of times my husband and I showed up to that Pizza Hut, and we have both formally complained to Pizza Hut corporate, that they just didn't have enough staff working that day or whatever, so they just closed the doors. This is pre-pandemic. So why would anybody expect that during or post-pandemic that they would be any different than they were before anything happened? 
And I'm not sitting here and I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm just trying to say, like, this is reality. This is how things work. You know, when somebody gets let out of prison and I, before somebody goes, I can't believe you're equating the two. I'm not equating the two. I'm just putting it into a different perspective here. When somebody comes out of prison, you don't expect them to acclimate to civilian life. Same thing with military. Right away. It takes time. It's the same thing here, guys. It takes time. It's going to take time for businesses to recover and have a full staff and have the staff be trained. It's going to take time for restaurants to get back to the fast speed that they were working at before. It's going to take time for life to be the way it was. And in all reality, there's a good part of me that doesn't think it ever will. I don't want to be a pessimist. But it's really hard to come back from something like this where... Everybody has had to change their lifestyle. Um, and I shouldn't say everybody because we all know there are some people out there that you know, that I know, live in your neighborhood, that you've seen down the street that have never worn a mask, that have never gotten their vaccines, that have never washed their hands or used hand sanitizers or continue to go out in public when they're sick. We all know those people exist. But that's why the rest of us need to do our best to make up for it. So, so that's my deep and angry tangent, I guess. I just, people deserve a lot more respect than they're given. And I know there are some people out there that believe that people don't earn, uh, deserve respect until they earn it. But the same thing goes for you then. Like, why would they give you respect if you're not showing it to them? What did that 16-year-old who's working their first job at McDonald's ever do to you that, that, it was, that you thought it was okay to scream at them for screwing up your order or adding pickles when you said no pickles? Every single time my husband and I have ordered from Panera, every single time I say no onions and they put like twice as many onions on his order. I, I don't know. Um, and instead of me complaining on Facebook to people who are going to be able to do nothing about it, we contacted the restaurant and or the corporate and let them know, like, hey, I'm not sure if your online ordering is not working properly, but for some reason, we keep clicking it and it keeps happening. I didn't say what store I was at. I didn't say anything like that so that this person wasn't going to get in trouble. But it's just something like maybe there was a, a glitch in the matrix and it needed to be resolved. I don't know. I just... I'm one of those people... That I am, you have to give me a reason not to like you, um, unless there's something about you like I inherently, like, makes me feel uncomfortable. And we all have those, uh, people that they just, they make you put yourself on high alert. And usually when somebody does, it's for good reason. But, again, that's a conversation for another day. Um, yeah, so, that's really all I wanted to talk about with that. So, on Saturday, like I said, we're going to be jumping all over the place here, guys. On Saturday, I woke up having a Charlie horse, which if you've never had a Charlie horse, it feels like somebody is yanking on your muscle and pulling at it really, really hard. And it just locks in place. And it's typically a sign of low potassium. So a lot of people will say, go eat a banana. I'm one of those people that I like banana, but I don't like eating bananas because the texture is difficult for me to actually like swallow and palate. And anyway, um, usually I wake up screaming from Charlie Horses. And, um, if you ask Brian, he'll tell you that's his, like, favorite thing about me ever. And that's said with complete sarcasm. Um, this one was different, though. This one, it woke me up. And sometimes I, like, basically force my husband to massage my calf. It's always the same spot, too. Um, because sometimes I can't even get off the bed and put weight onto it. It just makes it worse in the moment. And then I'll have that muscle pain for like days afterwards. It sucks. Uh, but that's it. I'm used to it. It happens to me fairly regularly. It'll come in waves. Like I might go 
a year without getting one, and then I could get, like, three in the span of a month. But this one woke me up, and it was more of a dull pain instead of, like, the sharp, throbbing pain. And I was like, okay, okay, it's not as bad. It's going to end. It's going to end. But it didn't end. It just kept going for, like, an hour. So I went to use the bathroom, sitting on, we have a squatty potty, so I put my legs on the squatty potty, hoping that that would help put my muscle in a, in a good position to help. No, the whole time I could just feel the throbbing and the tightness, and I was like, oh my god, will this please end? And they always happen where I have enough time to go back to sleep, but not enough time to get good sleep. You know, like, I might get, like, another hour of sleep before the kids awake or sometimes not even and I was just like oh my god like I just want to go to sleep but I can't go to sleep because my leg is sitting here throbbing and it sucks I was reading on a Facebook post the other day somebody's like Charlie horses are only associated with pregnancy and I was like that is incorrect couldn't tell you if I had a single one during my pregnancy but I can tell you I've had them for the millions of years before it and after it and um I had them. For sure, I don't get pregnant. Mm. That's true. They suck. If you've never had a Charlie horse, thank yourself. Because it's one of those things that, like, some people will tell you they're not painful. They're just uncomfortable. I'm here to tell you, for me, they are painful. Um, I'm probably going to be out of frame here a little bit. Because I, like I said, I left myself a really huge spot to work on. And I just don't feel like shifting the canvas. So I'm just working... Working out of frame. I wonder if she fell asleep. My guess is no. But anyway, so that sucked. And like all weekend, Briar, actually since the day she got sick, Briar's been saying to me, I want to do something. I want to do something cool. Can we, can we do something? And we kept explaining to her like, sweetheart, even though you feel good, you don't feel sick. You are sick. And I think this is one thing that a lot of people... Pre, post, COVID, whatever. People fail to understand that even if you have symptoms of being sick, but you feel good, you are still sick. And the amount of times I remember when Briar was little that people would be like, oh, don't worry, it's just allergies. And then the next day or two, my kid would come down and I was like, this is not allergies. My kid has a terrible cold. <sighs> So, I don't know if it came from the one time we went to the playground, because it was like, the timing makes sense, but it sucks, and she feels good, but she, I said, baby girl, you, you're not there yet, so, um, this week, Mother Nature granted us with, um, a week of every day in the 90s, and humid, like, today is supposed to be, I think, 93 or 94, but the humidity is unbelievable. Like, this morning at, like, 5 in the morning, it was already 80-something degrees. And, um, excuse me, if you live somewhere where it's a dry climate, like, my sister lives in Arizona, and I remember when she would be like, yeah, but it's, it's dry heat. I don't care how dry the heat is, 110 degrees is 110 degrees. But let me tell you, 80 degrees with 80% humidity is far more miserable than... 90 degrees with 0% humidity. So, I'm just waiting for this humidity to break. We did get a pool. There's no such thing as shade. Well, we got an inflatable pool this year. And it dawned on my husband and I that we did not buy an air pump for it. Now, I have to double check because I don't think it has a foot pump. Which would be great if it did. But, um, so we might have to pick one up on Prime or, um you know, swing by Walmart or whatever, but it sucks because we were going to put it up the other day when she was sick and, you know, he's like, I'm worried. I don't want her to aspirate and make things worse. If you guys don't know what that means, that means simply when fluids doesn't have to just be liquids you drink. It can be like saliva as well. Um, they go into your lungs and or your airway instead of going down your esophagus into your stomach. Um, my daughter has struggled with that for her whole life. Um, we spent 
two, almost two years in feeding therapy, and that was huge for us. However, she still cannot drink out of an open cup, and we just don't really force it because we'd rather her just continue to drink out of a straw cup knowing that she's safe than to push it because, like, she can still lead a completely normal life drinking out of a straw cup. You know, it's not like straws don't exist. Um, and if they don't, I have straws in my bag. I always carry washable and reusable straws. So, if you are somebody that cares nothing about my kids' medical stuff, you, you probably already tuned out by now. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about that for the last couple minutes of my whip and chat here. Um, so, I'm just giving you fair warning. Nothing is going to be graphic or anything like that. But, um, okay. So, as you may or may not know, my daughter was born with an airway disorder called laryngomalacia. Basically, what that means is she was born with a, a soft and floppy larynx. Now, what does that mean in, like, the most simple terms? So, when she used to breathe, she had something that was called strider, which we always described it to people that she sounded like a pug. That was the easiest way for us to describe to other people what was going on. And it was because there's two things. Either because of the narrowing, like, if your airway is like this. This is a visual graphic for anyone who's looking up. And you're breathing. Air is just going in and out like this. But if you have your airway and it's pinched off because it's softened and it's in on itself, then you have a narrower spot to breathe out of. If it's bad enough, it can flop over and block the airway. And that's why children have what's called blue spells because they a loss of oxygen. So, we have not heard my daughter Strider... Since she was, I'm going to just round up and say, let's say about a year. Uh, it was a little bit under that. I want to say it was like eight, nine, maybe ten months was the last time we really heard it. And it it wasn't like it was there one day and it was gone the next. We just got so used to it that one day we realized, huh, we hadn't heard it in a while. But we'll go back and we'll look at old videos of Briar and we'll go, oh, okay, she was nine months here. She still had Strider. Um, but at six months old, she was released from her ENT, your nose throat, um, and they didn't examine her. They just walked in and said, wow, her strider sounds much better. We're going to release you and you don't need to come back. If you have anything that you have concerns about, feel free to call us, but we're releasing you. So, in that moment, we thought to ourselves, oh, well, she's, she doesn't have it anymore then. And that's not at all what that actually means. And um, I have been upset for a couple years now that they never bothered to actually examine my child, to scope her again. They didn't even put a hand on her to, like, check her temp, nothing. So, when she was sick, she was eating a snack. She was sitting in her high chair, or high tray, as she calls it. And she was eating some apple slices. And I'm well aware, before anyone tries to tell me, I'm well aware that my daughter was congested. And like any of us, if you're sick, it's harder to breathe and do something else. So, it's harder to, you know, talk and be congested. It's harder to laugh like when you're congested and you laugh oh my god it's the worst because you're like I feel like I can't catch my breath so we're sitting there and the amount of strider that is coming out of my daughter is overwhelming now she hasn't had it I honestly like I like I said one around one is the last time I truly remember hearing it and my husband and I have been questioning for a very long time if we should get a second opinion on our daughter because I don't suspect that she has outgrown it or I, I suspect there's more going on than what we were led to believe in the first place. Um, but we have also, we're both very much aware that we're past the point now that anybody would really do anything about it. But the aspects of her life that it was affecting when she was three months old a lot of that is still being affected. 
she's still slow to gain weight. She still struggles with reflux. She still struggles with thin liquids, um, but not to the same capacity because we're not providing them to her in an open cup. Um, she doesn't have blue spells anymore. Um, and at the time, we didn't even know that that's what she was having. But the fact that she was having Strider episodes made me concerned. So, my theory, thought, whatever you want to call it, is that she still does have this going on. And the reason we heard it was because her airway was more inflamed than normal. But a non-airway child doesn't sound like that. So, sick or not, that may have been our silver lining for us to say we're justified in feeling the way we feel. So now I am putting on my mom hat and I am going to advocate for a second opinion for my daughter. Three years after she was released from her ear, nose, and throat care and... Uh, for anyone who says, I've never heard of laryngomalacia, or I thought it was something kids were supposed to outgrow. We had never heard of laryngomalacia before our daughter was diagnosed with it, and we were told this was something she would outgrow. We were also told she would outgrow the reflux, which she has yet to do. And um, I have enough things going on with her that are still concerning that I want answers. And if you are familiar with specialists, it doesn't matter what kind of specialist it is, every specialist has their own things that they specialize in as well. So just because somebody is a pediatric ENT does not mean that they are well-versed on airway disorders. And I don't want to take my daughter to a doctor that has bare minimum knowledge on it because we went to our local children's hospital to get diagnosed and to have our ENT and that's who has let us down. And I'm sure there's somebody going, oh, well, it was probably just that doctor. Well, I can tell you that we've had a lot of not so grand experiences with that hospital and, and the specialists as well. So just filled this and I feel like the wax is just not in the right place. You ever do that? Um, so it's a bit frustrating, but the more and more my husband and I are in this world of being medical parents, the more and more we see how common it is for people to just be told it's no big deal. Your child will grow out of it. And that be the end of the conversation. Well, my conversation isn't over. It's over with that doctor. It's over with that hospital. But it's not over. So we are now on the hunt for a new ENT who specializes in airway disorders and offers second opinions. Um, I've got three options right now. One would be out of state. And... I just have to play the insurance game and the scheduling game and see who can do what. But it is incredibly frustrating when the people you pay, the doctors that you pay, tell you that it's not a big deal. Your kid's going to grow out of it soon. And then when it doesn't, they've got nothing to say. So um, I am frustrated as a parent that we've gone we've gotten to this point and been told so many times that it's not a big deal she'll outgrow it I'm here to tell you if you have a child and your mom got your dad got your parent got whatever it is is telling you something's wrong something's not right listen to it because while I may not have a medical degree, I certainly know my child way better than a doctor who's met my child for 13 minutes. It blows my mind how the reason we had issues, quote unquote, was told to us because we were first time parents. But the amount of people that I see who not only have multiple children, but who have multiple children that have this diagnosis. I just put that color away. 
And, uh, and they still get written off. Like, it's not a big deal. And for most kids who have this airway disorder, um, and you can have laryngomalacia, which is of the larynx, tracheomalacia, uh, bronchomalacia, and pharyngomalacia. So you can have it in any part of the airway. Um, an ENT is the only one who can diagnose it. Your pediatrician cannot diagnose it. So a lot of people will go, well, my pediatrician told me it's not a big deal. I'm here to tell you that whether it's a big deal or not to the medical community, if it is affecting your child and their way of life, it's a big deal. It's a big deal to spend an hour to two hours feeding your child a bottle, watching as they're struggling to breathe. It's a big deal to watch while your kid is turning blue and they tell you it's no big deal. It's a big deal when you watch that your child can't completely breathe on their own without needing to be repositioned or needing oxygen or a pulse ox or sleep apnea machines. It's a big deal. And it's a big deal when someone tells you that what's important to you isn't important to them. I know that the doctors, it's not their job to make me feel better. But it is their job to treat my child to the best of their abilities. And we have not had that with our kid. And she has seen multiple specialists for the same thing because we've been written off or told... They'll outgrow it. They don't have it. There's no nothing going on here. We had the head of one gastroenterology department tell us our child doesn't even have reflex and reflux. And then here we are waiting to go in for an endoscopy to confirm or deny her severity of reflux and uh, eosinophilic esophagitis. As a first-time parent, we didn't know that it wasn't normal to fight with your kid to take a bottle. Because every doctor kept telling us, there's nothing wrong. It's no big deal. And it was. And it still is. And I'm still here fighting three and a half years later. And I will be damned if I just turn over and give up now. So... If anybody is interested in learning more about Larango Malaysia, please make sure that you follow me in my stories on Instagram. Um, World Airway Disorders Day is July 10th this year and every single year. If you are interested in helping out but you don't know how to, you can always share social media posts to help raise awareness. Even if you don't know what any of it means or... You know, you don't know anybody with it. There's a handful of things that kids get, for example, that are recognizable by the, the name of it. Larango Malaysia is not one of them. There's nothing, I hate to say this, there's nothing glamorous about Larango Malaysia. There's nothing marketable about Larango Malaysia. So it goes completely under the radar until people like myself, my husband, and everybody, all the volunteers over at Coping with Larango Malaysia, it takes people like us to stand up and say, you haven't heard of it? Well, let me tell you about it for it to be brought to the forefront. Paint your nails light blue. Use the hashtag light blue for LM, hashtag World Airway Disorders Day, hashtag Larango Malaysia. Um, buy a t-shirt from the Coping with LM Teespring shop. If you are interested in hosting a fundraiser or being part of a fundraiser, you can reach out to me directly. Uh, these are all things that I can do that don't necessarily cost any money, but they can help raise awareness. Uh, so if you see my husband and myself wearing blue nail polish in July and you're like, what's that all about? That's what that's about. I... We'll be putting together, my hopes is to do two separate fundraisers. One that is small shop, uh, like clothing and accessories for children, small shop. And then my other hope is to do something diamond painting related. So again, I've said this before, but if you are interested in helping me out with anything, zero obligations, please contact me. All of my information is always down below. 
Um, and we're going to continue to do this. Whether my kid still has Lorengo Malaysia or not, this has shaped who Brian and I are as parents. This has shaped what it looks like to be a parent, what it looks like to be an advocate, what it looks like to be a safe haven for our child. And I've had people tell me, I don't think I could do what you've done, or I don't know how you've done it. I don't know how you've handled it. And the fact of the matter is, I didn't have a choice. Um, not that anyone has a choice when their child is sick or has health complications, because she's not a sickly child. But at the same token, I don't know what it's like to just give a child a bottle and walk away and it'd be fine. I don't know what it's like for a child to not squeak and make all these noises. I don't know what it's like. And um, I probably never will. So with that being said, I have hit the hour mark here. I am going to wrap up. Perfect timing. I just finished this last color here. But if you guys have made it all the way to the end of this video, leave a heart emoji in your favorite color. And if you wonder why I always use a light blue emoji for the heart, it is always because of Lorango Malaysia. So thank you guys so much for being here. Before you leave, if you could give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. We're going to ignore that the polish needs to be changed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Come. Join the Sparkle Squad. And while you're there, hit that notification bell. Yay. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time. I record while my, my tiny human is sleeping or, like today, sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here. As always, from the bottom of my heart, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. And uh, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>